Alright, what's up? I uh, just want to show everybody real quick uh, something that I'm kind of experimenting on. Uh, a buddy on Team Lone Star asked for some discs and uh, some jackrabbits and, and an armadillo. And uh, I asked him if he wanted some dyes, and he was like, cool, and I started explaining what we, what I could do, and he was really excited about it once he found out what I could do for him. Um, he has a really sweet logo I'm going to show you here in a second that he wants to put on his armadillo, and I'm like, I can totally do this. And I want to show you all some of the problems that as disc dyers you're going to run into when people give you stuff and nothing against anybody like that. I just want, image files are image files to people that don't do this stuff, but... Those of you that like have made a lot of stencils and stuff, you know that not all the image files are equal. Like some of the stuff, just the images are just real. It might look good from a distance, but once you get zoomed in on it, the lines aren't real straight, real usable for the cutting machine. So I'm going to explain how I'm going to go about breaking this down and creating this in a different way. Think, you got, think about it as a disc dyer and how I can do it to recreate this as opposed to trying to force this image to work that I know really won't quite work. So I'm going to go through some of the graphic art stuff that I do to make this thing work. Alright, first I'm going to show you that image real quick. Alright, so this is his logo, right? And looks pretty awesome. I, like, I don't really have any issues with it. But something to kind of See how close I can get. So what they kind of did here is it's, these stars are kind of like three-dimensional. Like they got shadow behind them with the, those little extra lines. But you also notice like the lines themselves are really not straight. They're kind of jagged. Same thing with the circles. So when I try to pull, I mean this is the PNG. So when I try to pull an image off this at, in Inkscape, these stars are not real clear. The chains and stuff like that are going to be an issue too, but I'm hoping that the cutter can handle that because I don't know how else I'm going to do that. Um, but it's a really cool image. I really like it. So what I'm going to try to do is I've kind of broke it down logically. It's going to, the things that my cutter is probably going to have a problem with are obviously the stars. So I'm going to omit this ring of stars and the circles because I can do the circles with spin dies and... I can, or I can even hand cut stencils or whatever, but I'll probably just spin die. That's easy enough. Um, and then I can do this actual text separately as well. I can do these cuts inside Cricut. I've got all kinds of different fonts. I'm sure I can match that font. If not, I'll go find one. Um, but yeah, that's just some of the things I'm going to... And then, so the Ring of Stars I'm going to recreate. I, found, I already went and found and purchased like an SVG that has different different package of SVGs that have like uh, ring of stars so I can replace that with a cleaner SVG that'll just take its place. So really what I'm going to use from this is this central image. I'm going to omit the rest of it. So let's get into Inkscape and I'll show you how I do all that. Alright, so I'm in Inkscape. Alright, go to file, I'm going to import, I'm going to bring in his image right these are the different images and i show you which one i decided to use and why um, between jpegs and pngs i would always really like the png better just seems like you get better quality off of it but i mean teach their own you can try i tried this one before it's like a hot stamp this is really low image quality so i'm not i'm going to avoid that one this one right here is actually like the one of the smaller files it's only 0.98 megabytes so I'm going to grab it, and I've had pretty good luck with it so far. The only other one would be that one. This one has like a black background, which is extra stuff I don't need. And it kind of makes the other stuff harder to see. Alright, there's my image. Let's get a little closer. And as you can see, when I come in here, it's got the weird things with the stars, right? And again, this is the PNG, so this is all still based on pixels, so it can get away with stuff like that. The vector files won't work that way, so what happens when I go make a vector file? I've kind of got this broke down to even my standard setup inside Inkscape, because I wanted you guys to see how to get, how to get everything if you're going cold fish into Inkscape. Inkscape is a free download, by the way, people. You should just go 
search for it on Google and go grab it and download it. This is a good way to transfer your PNGs and stuff to SVGs if you can't find them already as SVGs. Okay, so we're going to go up here to path with this thing highlighted, right? This is highlighted. Also, real quick, I'm going to do something else before I do anything else. I'm going to click object up here and hit objects. This gives you this little uh, side menu and it's really helpful. Uh, it just shows you what all you have available. Like layer one is just always there. And there's my image, right? So I've got it selected. It makes it easier to select the whole thing as a group too. I go to path. The thing we're going to do is to trace bitmap. That's what you're always going to be wanting to do to create SVG files. So you're tracing the bitmap and turning it into vector files. So there's different options I can do. I really like to do the multiple scan on the colors whenever I can. So basically I've got red, white, blue, and black. So it's four colors. Just update. And it should give me our basic image, right? Sometimes you can like bump up a color. Maybe there's something you're missing there. Maybe it's a different shade of blue or something in there. Once you hit apply, you've created it, right? Um, the one right here that has the drop down, that's your that's your bit that's your new vector file because these are all the paths. Okay, this is the original file. You can get rid of this. I can bring it back in later if I need it. All right, so there's my file. This is my going to be my vector file. It's not, it's not yet. We haven't saved it, but it, this is a vector file now. If we go into these stars now, what we'll see is we have like different colors, right? And that's what I thought. That's why we got more detail when we added that extra color. We, there's some little traces of other colors. So one of the easiest things to do, because I don't like the stencil cutter is not going to make all this gray. Like I, don't, I can't handle that. So what we'll do is go in and get rid of the colors we don't need. You have to kind of guess at this stuff. Like, I don't know which one's which sometimes. This is probably white, which we can get rid of. Didn't hurt anything, as you can see. I like to kind of keep the whole thing highlighted to make sure it stays centered. Alright. That's probably the black. That's probably red or blue. That's blue, and then that's red. This may be the gray, let's see. Yeah, that was the gray. So this is what we're left with. Okay, and as before, this is what I had before. And I was like, yeah, the stencil cutter is not going to make clean stars out of that. And I could go in and, and erase these little, I even started to, I go in and like er, go in with my eraser real fine. Take that down to much smaller. It won't be fine if I don't say make it is. But you can go in like this and like erase those little edges and stuff. But you can spend a lot of time doing that and you'll get those little stray things cleaned up. But the, the star lines itself, a lot of these are really not good. You know, it'd be really hard to try to fix that with an eraser. You're trying to get straight vector lines for the cuts and you're not going to get straight lines with that going by and erasing stuff. So I'd like to be able to just kind of take things off. I'll turn everything off except for the middle part and I could almost do that by turning off the blue but if I turn off the blue I'll lose the basket and I really don't need anything else but I can turn off the red because again I can do that as a spin die I don't need that and I really don't need the blue like I said except for the cage and that's the only reason I have to keep it that's probably the black yeah control Z for undo people you know, we go up to here to edit, undo, you know. What happens if I take that out? Yeah, that ruins the goal. Okay. So, basically what's left is I have to erase what's left in there that I don't want to keep. And like I said, I'm going to do the text, I think, by hand. Or not by hand, but like inside the Cricut make this text, make that text. I had to do the same thing with my logo, my own Ninja Disc Golf logo. Um, but we'll do, we'll get rid of the stars and we'll do the ring of stars and we'll do redo the text in there. We're also going to redo that band of brothers because I don't think, 
It came out pretty clean, but I don't know. The cutter might have a hard time with it. And we can try it. If the cutter can do that, I guess I can do that. We can try leaving all that text actually for now. And I'll leave that circle. I'll just get rid of the stars and we'll see how it cuts with that. Because I would try to see if it works. Also, leaving that kind of gives me a gauge to the, how big make the stars when I bring them in. Alright, so I'm just going to show you guys how to go through here and, you know, I'll take this up to like 50. Go through here and just clean up stuff. I'm just using the erase tool. Don't try to start doing this real fast and, like, I, I've erased part of my other image and it just, it's a lot of, oh, oops, didn't mean to do that, control Z, control Z. Better if you just kind of take your time and do one star at a time. I believe there's 24 stars and I could, I went and tried to let, find a good SVG that had 24 stars and I couldn't find one that had exactly 24. I found one that had 25. Robert, I'm sorry brother, as close as I could get. It'll look cool dude, I promise. This won't be perfect. Won't be your exact logo, but it'll be really close. One extra star. But it'll be the easiest way for my cutter to handle this. Because there's no way my cutter is going to make clean stars with those. It's just learn, knowing from experience, guys. Even that circle. I don't even know how clean that circle is on this outside. We'll try it with the text and everything one time and see how it works. And if it doesn't work good, then we'll have to just do it without the text. And... Uh, I'm trying to say, um, do the text inside Cricut, and it'll cut good. Because I had the same problem. It looked really good, and looked like it would be a good cut, but my stencil cutter did not make it cleanly. But I say that, and I still was able to make a good dye out of it. It just wouldn't have made like a good stencil otherwise. The letters came out in pieces, as opposed to just like one letter each. Like they normally does if I do it if I do the lettering inside Cricut which is what I did with my logo because I want to be able to do my logo as like a windshield sticker and stuff like that okay so all the stars are gone all right at this point I'm going to import another thing I'm going to import my ring of stars that I was talking about. And I bought this earlier off Etsy. Most of my image files I get off Etsy, y'all, like, I buy stuff. Like, I, I don't want y'all to, like, think that I'm out here pirating images and stuff. I know how to do a lot of stuff, and I probably could. But you're going to get crappier images that way, for one, because, like I said, it's harder to start with, like, a PNG and turn it into a really good SVG or JPEG or whatever, when you, especially if you do it as a, a screen capture. The cheaper the image, the harder it is to work with. So, I buy a lot of stuff off Etsy and stuff. And if you read a lot of this stuff, it basically says you're you're allowed to use it for commercial, uh, for like small business, just not for mass commercial reproduction. So even like the NFL stuff like that, when I bought them, they all say that. So, I mean, if you're just making this for people, I think that we're all good. I don't know the whole thing. Hopefully, I don't get sued. I don't think I'm making enough money to bother anybody anyway. So, I saw the stuff I was doing for Robert there. Dun dun dun. High secret. Confidential stuff. Da, da, da. No, I'm just kidding. Um, keep going up. Go into my Ninja Disk Off stuff. SVG files. Star frame 1. Alright. So, easiest way for me to do this so far has been. Throw that little lock on there, and then just scale it down like so. Like, highlight it, bring it back over here. This is the part that bugs me. Make it really hard to move this thing around. And I don't know why they did that, and I can't really, I don't know how to turn it off or anything. That looked like it centered up, so. That's still a little off center, though. Look. You got 
more ne less negative space here than you do over here. Let me see if I can scale it up just a smidgen and maybe fix that. that maybe did it, maybe a little bit more. Ah, I like it. Okay. So, original image, our image. Oh, wait, we gotta leave room for those other stripes. Alright, good thing we caught that. We gotta make this smaller. My bad. My bad. And make it smaller and get it closer to the actual thing there. About like that. And this is why I'm almost thinking I'm just going to get rid of this anyway because it'll make it easier for me to just put in my own text and do the spin die where I need to do it. Or not. I don't know, man. I don't know. It looks pretty good. So that's some of the stuff I have to do right there. Um, okay, so now that I've got two SVGs there on top of each other, I'm going to do this. I'm going to highlight both of them. And go back to path. Go to. Let's see if it'll let me combine them. There we go. Now it's all one thing, right? Okay. This is going to be rough still, I think. I think the cutter is going to have a hard time with these chains. Um, some of those I sh I'm probably going to go ahead and go in there and... Yeah, I'll go in there and clean some of this up with the eraser too. Some of these random ones. Make that a little bit easier on the cutter. We'll see how these words work out. Again, if this doesn't work on the first time, we'll try it again and we'll change this image up a little bit, um, making it more, get rid of the, the stuff I know I can't control, I can control more with the inside cricket. I can just get rid of these circles, do that all as a spin die, just do these, all the wording myself, text myself, whatever, but we'll see. First things first, let's go in there and erase some of that fine detail in there. Take this down to like 20. Zoom in. And some of that is what it is. I don't. I don't want to. I don't know. When you start like trimming these, it's like, can you really make that any cleaner? I don't know. Like I want to, but I don't know. I'm mainly just going to go in there and get rid of these strays. But yeah, this is what I'm talking about when it's like, it looks like a good image from the outside and it's nothing against people's images. It's just going from a pixelated image to a, a vector image. You don't really know what you're going to get. And sometimes you're like, yeah, it looked like chains from far away, but this is what it looks like close up. you <laughs> know. And that's what you're actually cutting and you're hoping that it comes out looking like chains. Again, if this doesn't work, I, if the chain thing really doesn't work, then that's going to be a harder thing for me to do. But I do have kind of a backup plan for that. We'll see if it kind of comes to that. And I'll tell you, kind of explain then what we'll do. Be a whole nother video. Well, not really. It'll just be a continuation of this. All 
we're going to hope that comes out looking like chains. If it doesn't, uh, my last ditch effort that I can maybe do is basically we'll, we'll be ditching everything except for the the AR and the boots and then we'll I'll kind of superimpose it onto another image of a goal. We'll have to remove the, the post the post out of the goal. But we'll see how that works. Because I've got SV good clean SVGs of goals with chains and everything. It's just combining it with that that image is gonna be tricky. We'll see. Hopefully this works. Alright, so now that we've got it all cleaned up the way we like it, what we'll do go to file save as and when I do this I, I, I tell this to everybody I've kind of walked through with this it's gonna default to save as type inkscape SVG but change that to plain SVG for some reason when I save them as inkscape SVG the, the cricket has an issue with them and doesn't load them all right so I'm gonna call this Roberts logo one I'm gonna go ahead and put this over in Robert's thing not here because I don't want this to be something I'm not really gonna save this long term I might give it to him if he wants it because yeah it's not I'm not gonna do it again on anything unless he wants me to do another one for him okay all right so now, that's half our battle, right? Let's go into the cricket and see what we got. Oh, it's opening on the other screen. One second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna go to a new project. We're gonna go to upload. We're gonna upload an image. Go to Robert's file. Robert's logo one. Okay, upload. Canvas it. I don't know why it came in invisible like that, but it did. Isn't that nice? So, in reality, this is probably going to be like seven and a half. All right. So this is what we're looking at. Whoa. Why is it doing that? Because I did it, right? just came in way over there, didn't it? Alright, there we go. Don't mind me, I'm just doing weird stuff over here apparently. Wasn't trying to. Alright. I don't know why, but it's not like letting me get close. There we go, finally. I just like to zoom in on it and see 
how clear it looks to me, you know, that's how clear it's going to be to the cutter, right? Doesn't look bad. We can give it a shot, basically. And it should already, since I did a combine inside Inkscape, which I wanted to do that so it would come in all as one piece, basically. Um, it should be good to just go ahead and cut without having to uh, do the attach or group or anything like that. I don't know how much you guys do inside crickets. But there you go. So, for me, I'm going to line up my circle. All right, and uh, through video editing magic, we are back now, like one month in the future. Not because it took me that long to finish the disc, but because it took me that long to finish this video. Just been really busy. Um, you know, I actually have video footage of everything we did on this disc. Uh, we did a, we printed out the stencil, we put it on the disc, as I always do, centered up with a laser pointer and everything. And uh, I did black brushwork for the. The interior, the the basket with the gun and everything, and then also did uh, the black letters and then the blue stars. The rest of it was all spin dies, just red and blue spin dies, right? I left the stencils on while I was doing the spin die, and that's how I got like the negative white space border around uh, the lettering and the blue stripe. That's an important step. Don't don't for don't take those stencils off and be like crap. You know, it's gonna be really hard to line that up again. Uh, you could try glue masking it, but again, it'd be really hard to get it perfectly accurate. Well, if you just glue mask the whole letter, that might work. It might not be a bad option, too. If you do accidentally take those off, you could try to do glue masking. That would be the easiest way. It would be much easier than trying to cover it up with vinyl again, I think. Anyway, I digress. Just going off on a tangent there. Um, I finished it up, and uh, I'll show you a picture of what the finished disc looked like. And I really hope this was informative. Um, I might do more of these because I've actually redone this logo since then like i've recreated the whole thing from scratch to get even even cleaner version of it uh just i replaced the original goal and everything and the only thing i use from the original stencil now is the is the actual the gun the ar and the, the pair of boots um, and I, I had to clean up the ar a little bit too i had to do some really cool stuff inside of cricket i've been doing more design now inside of cricket design space than i have been doing in inkscape i have a lot to learn about inkscape still but anyway Again, I hope this was informative and will help you guys make better stencils. Alright, man. Stay stealthy, ninjas.